Hello, in this video I'm going to show how to create BIM objects using Visual App in Rhino. The first thing we need to consider when we talk about a BIM object is that we will be dealing with geometry that has information, has data on it. And secondly, that we will need to share that object through the IFC file format. I'm going to show how to create BIM objects with Visual Arc with three different examples. In the first example, I will simply create a block out of this geometry, assign some data to it and export it to IFC. In the second example, I will also use this block, but I will create a visual art object out of it using the element object type. In the third example, I will also use the visual art element object, but in that case, I will use a parametric block. It will be an element object driven by a grasshopper style, generated by a grasshopper definition that will run in the background. But let's start with the first example. I have here some geometry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to create a block out of it. So I run the block command, I select the objects to include in that block, and a base point. Ceiling lamp. OK. And now, we can already export that to IFC. But I can assign some IFC data to it. For example, if I select that IFC tag icon in the properties panel, I can assign a specific type for that object. So I'm going to select the IFC flow terminal. Also, we can assign some name, for example, saving plan, some tag, or some description. And in addition to this uh, general information, we can assign also custom data to it. If we go to this parameter section, here we have the option to create new parameters and fit that block with new information. But if I do it from here, this new parameter will only exist for that object. If we wanted to have that parameter available for any other object or geometry, we can create it by document. And we can do it from the document properties. There is a shortcut from the visual art tools. We click here, document parameters. So we go to the document properties, parameters, and here we can add a new parameter. Click add, for example, price. We assign this to a category. Basically, categories are the way parameters are grouped in visual art dialogs. In this case, we can select an existing one or just type to create a new one, for example, response. And as data type, we can select any of these types, for example, currency. We click OK. I will click OK again. And we have this new parameter here available when we select that object. We can assign a value to it, for example, 300. And now we can export that already to, to IFC. We'll go to File, Save As, select the IFC file format, which is provided by Visual Art, and we give this a name. For example, Sailing Lab. Visual Art offers you the option to export IFC files with the geometry and the information and the properties, or simply with just the geometry which won't have all this data that we have assigned to it. In this case, I'm going to select the object and properties. Also, Visual Art offers the option to assign these IFC types to layers. So for assigning an IFC type to all geometry existing in the same layer, we could assign it from, from here. So we click OK, and now we can check how this object looks like in Solidity, for example. Upper model, same lamp, if we select the object, we can see that the information such as the name, the tag, or the IFC type is read by uh, Solibri. Also, if we go to the custom tab, we can see also the information of this custom parameter that we have assigned to that object. Now let's go for the second example. In this case, I'm going to create a new 
element style that is going to use that block that we have generated. I do right click here to open the styles dialog for the element object. I'm going to create a new style. And I will assign a block for that element style, which is the ceiling lamp that we have just created. I could also assign a block for the 2D representation, for the plan B representation of this object, but in this case, it's not necessary. I'm going to call this saving lamp as well. The advantage of managing these blocks through element styles is that we can assign parameters to the style directly, and we don't need to assign them one by one to the instances of this object that we have in the model. We go to parameters, we can see now this price parameter, and we can assign a value to it, for example, 300 as well. When we click OK, and we insert this object in the model, for example, a couple of instances, we can select each one of them and go to parameters, and we can see that the value for the price is already assigned. This value, by the way, can be overwritten by these objects. So we can select both and assign here a different value. Also, we can assign an FC type because element objects are meant to be any object type that doesn't fit into the other visual object types. So we have totally freedom to assign another IFC type. So we'll go to the IFC flow terminal. And we can get rid of this original block now. Now, let's see the third option to create a beam object. But in this case, I will use a grasshopper style with the element object. Basically, I will create a new element style driven by a grasshopper definition. First of all, I'm going to open grasshopper. I will select this example that generates this lamp. These parameters define the lamp dimensions. And at the end of this definition, I have some ending components, geometry components that are not connected with anything else that Visual Arc will identify as different parts of that new style. These input values will become the parameters to edit on the final object and will also become IFC properties when we export that object to IFC. I save this definition, close Grasshopper, I open the element styles dialog, right click here. I will create a new style, but in this case, I will select the grasshopper style. I will select the lamp definition. Click Next. I can specify style name and definition units. Here I've got the three components that I hide in the grasshopper file. And here I have all the parameters that define the shape of this object. And I can decide how I want to edit them. The parameters that I decide that can be editable by object are those that will be able to be exported as IFC properties. For example, the height of the object or the base radius. I click Finish. And since I have this object divided into three different components, I can select each one of these parts and also assign specific attributes. For example, I can assign this glass material to the upper part of this lamp. I click OK. Now I can insert some instances of this new element style. And later on, I can select one of them, go to the element, and here I can change, for example, the height, assign a different base radius, and do the same for the other labs. So you have a full parametric object that is easily editable through visual dialogs. I can also assign a price to it, for example, 400. I can see that this object doesn't have any price assigned to the style. I can do it with right click here, go to LAMP, and assign here a value for it. 
But again, this value can be overridden but by any other number. And finally, I will select these objects and I will also assign the proper IFC type. So finally, I will save this as IFC, file, save as, select the IFC file format, click save, okay, and let's see how these objects look like in Solibri. I'm going to close this model, open a new one, and when select any of these objects, for example this tall lamp, I can see the IFC type went through, also the value for the price went through as well, and as inputs, I can see these two values that I uh, assigned in Rana that basically come from that original grasshopper definition. In this case, I will have the element created from a block, but I also have the IFC entity and also the values assigned to that custom parameter. So this is the way you can create BIM objects in Rhino in different ways and build your own BIM library of objects with information.